I'm so glad that you decided to start joining my book club. So, I've always enjoyed reading, and I was an English major in college, so some of these stories are ones that I read and studied during my undergraduate career. So I'm really excited to share some with you. For today's book club meeting, we have some stories by Edgar Allan Poe. He wrote so many short stories and poems that I really enjoy. So I'm going to go over some of those with you today and read you some of my favorite works by Edgar Allan Poe. I think I want to start with, start with, start with one that I believe is super underrated, and that is Fairyland, Fairyland, Fairyland. Let me get there. Page 403, and let's get started. Dim valves and shadowy floods and cloudy looking woods, whose forms we can't discover. For the tears that drip all over huge moons, their wax and wane again and again, again. Every moment of the night, forever changing places. And they put out the starlight with the breath of their pale faces. About twelve by the moon dial, one more filmy than the rest. And kind which upon trial they have found to be the best. Come down and still down and down with its center on the crown of a mountain's eminence. While it wide with circumference an easy drapery falls over hamlets, over falls, over halls. <laughs> Whenever they may be, or oh, the strange woods, or oh, the sea. Over spirits on the wing, over every drowsy thing. And buries them up quiet in a labyrinth of light. And then how deep, oh deep, is passion of their sleep. In the morning they arise, and their moony covering is soaring in the skies, with the tempest as they toss, like almost anything, or a yellow albatross. They use that moon no more, for the same as it been end as before. Bottomless 
valves and boundless floods and chasms and caves and titan woods with forms that no man can discover for the dews that drip all over mountains toppling evermore into seas without a shore seas that restlessly aspire surging onto skies of fire lakes that endlessly outspread their lonely waters lone and dead their still waters still and chilly with snows of the lolling lily by the lakes that thus outspread their lone waters lone and dead their sad waters sad and chilly with the snows of lolling lily by the mountains near the river murmuring lowly murmuring ever by the gray woods by the swamp where the toad and the newt encamp by the dismal tarns and pools where dwell the ghouls by each spot the most unholy in each nook most melancholy there the travelers meet aghast sheeted memories of the past shrouded from that start and sigh as they pass the wanderer by white robbed forms of friends long given in agony to the earth and heaven for the heart whose woes are legion tis a peaceful soothing region for the spirits that walks in the shadows tis oh tis an mysteries are exposed to the weak human eye unclosed so wills its king who hath forbid it the uplifting of the fringed lid and thus the sad soul that here passes beholds it but through darkened glasses by a route obscure and lonely haunted only where an Edon named Night on a black throne reigns upright I have wandered home but newly from this ultimate dim fully Edgar of his stories I really get drawn into the darkness of in his alliteration and his visuals the representation that he draws upon is just amazing through his words let's see which one do you want to hear let me see if that one's in this book Of course it would be. It is one of his most popular works. It was the one right after Dreamland. This is The Raven. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore. While I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. "'Tis some visitor,' I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. Only this. Distinctly I remember it was the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow. Vainly I had bought to borrow from my books surcease of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore, for the radiant, 
for the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels named Lenore, nameless here forevermore, and the silken sad uncertain rustling of each purple cordon thrilled me, filled me. of my heart, I stood repeating, tis some visitor entreating, entrance at my chamber door, some late visitor entreating, entrance at my chamber door, this it is, and nothing more, presently my soul grew stronger, hesitating, then no longer, Sir, said I, or madam, truly, your forgiveness I implore. For the fact is, I was napping, and so gently you come rapping, and so faintly you come tapping, tapping at my chamber door, that I scarce was sure I heard you, ere I opened wide the door. Darkness there, and nothing more. Deep into the darkness peering, long I stood there wandering, fearing, doubting, dreaming, dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, and the darkness gave no token, and the only word that there was spoken was the whispering word Lenore. This I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word Lenore. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning, soon I heard again a tapping, somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that is something at my window. Lattice, lattice, let me see then that thereat is, and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment, and this mystery explore. Tis the wind, and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter, when with many a flirt and flutter, and there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least a visit made he, not a minute stopped or stayed he, but with mine of lord or lady, preached above the chamber door, perched upon the butts of ballads, just above my chamber door, perched and sunk and nothing more. Then this ebony bird bangled my sad fancy into smiling by the grove and stern dingle and the countenance it wore. Though thy crest be shorn and shaven, thou, I said, art assured no craven. Ghastly grim and ancient raven wandering from the nightly shore, tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's Platonian shore. Quote the Much I marveled this ungainly fowl to hear disclosure, discourse so pain, though it answer little meaning, little reverence poor, for we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet has blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door, bird or beast upon the sculptured bust above his chamber, chamber door, with such a name as nevermore. said Edgar Allan Poe, the way he draws upon darkness and his imaging, his wording, everything just makes his stories come together. They're not something you'd want to read to be uplifting necessarily, but they can give you a feeling of euphoria because it's so beautiful.